Genetics plays a very crucial role in the production and productivity of livestock. My name is Dr. Nali Maima. I'm a bed by profession and a farmer. I keep the, uh, the Jersey cow. There are many dairy breeds, but today I'm going to talk about the Jersey cow because that's what I keep. So, why the Jersey cow? It has the high butter fat. It has really a good amount of milk, but has a butter and high butter fat. So, I personally want to make cheese and butter. That's why I keep the Jersey cow. I want to make cheese, butter, and green. Now, this Jersey cow eats a really good amount of milk, I mean a good amount of food to give you milk. First time, as on the first parity, you get about 15 to 18 liters. But then, as they, they, they keep producing, it increases. We registered here on the farm, we registered the Jersey cow giving us 30 liters of milk. Now, I started with one cow. Right now, I have 11 cows and so many heifers and so many cows. But what has enabled me to do that? I'm using sex semen. Now, first of all, to breed any animal when you're doing uh, zero grazing, you don't need a bull. Because a bull is kind of a waste of time and money and even injuries. Why? Because it will stay for 11 months to inseminate or to serve the other cow. So what we do, we get rid of the bull. Bulls are kept in the bull stud. And then here we only have, we use artificial insemination. So basically this is what someone has to do. How will you tell that your cow is in heat, especially if she's a zero grazer? You will look, the first day, that day she may not actually eat. She may be off feet, she may be restless. But if she's one cow, you will look at, you, the, for you to really tell that she's on heat, you will look at the mucus. The mucus is quite clear, mucus. Then she's on heat. Some cows bellow, you know, they bellow. They don't know, but they bellow, they make noise. And then some other cows, if there are two, three cows, then she will be mounted. She will start mounting others or she will accept to be mounted. Then you know that this cow is on heat. But the real clear sign that she's on heat will be that mucus, the white mucus. So then you call your inseminator. When you call your inseminator, the inseminator comes and you tell them you want sex soon for Jesse. Now, one thing, some people want to do uh, crossbreeding. Please never crossbreed a Jersey cow with a fresh and all these other. So the Jersey cow is small. She's small, so you need to put a Jersey cow. If you put another cow, she'll have difficulty in breeding in, in giving birth. So, but then since you want, you are keeping the Jersey cow, then you ask for the Jersey semen. And it's sex. Why sex semen? You are sure that the next calf that is coming out is a female. That means your heart is going to grow faster. Instead of waiting, waiting, waiting today, the probability of, have, probability of having a female is a half. But when you have sex semen, you are sure that you're going to have um, a female cow. Now, once the cow is on heat, first of all, you need to feed her well for her to go on heat. Because if you don't feed her well, she will not go on heat. And then she will take longer. And if you feed her well and she has gone on heat, she might not conceive if you stop feeding her well. So you have to feed well all through. So once she goes on heat, get her served and continue feeding her. So if she's this cow that is milking, you will have to stop milking her at seven months. Why? You want her to rest, to recuperate the body for the next cow. Please, 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 never milk till the end. You are interfering with the milk of the next lactation. Then, what do you do with the calf? When the calf is born, feed her very well. For us here, we give the calf milk for six months. The first two months, we shall give six liters of milk. Second two months, we give four liters of milk. 
the next two months we give two liters of milk. You may think this is wasting milk, but it's not. It's making this lady with this hay farm grow very fast. Protein is important for um, it's important for mammary production, for the mammary glands to really be to grow very fast. If you feel that this is too much, then you may use milk milk replacers. Still, the Euras people have them, the Euras people have sex semen, the Euras people have bolus, calcium bolus. One thing I forgot to tell you that when you are about to to dry off this lady, when you are about to dry off this lady, you need to give her calcium bolus. Why? You need to give her calcium bolus. Why? A high milker is going to have issues. It's going to have milk fever. A high milker is going to have I'm competing with them. That's again, actually, Uras itself, it means the ancestor of cows. So, being that we are a farmer owned organization, part of our ownership is owned by a farmer based cooperative, we own as owners. So, what we do focuses more on what does the farmer want? Whether you are a beef farmer or a dairy farmer, what are you looking for? So in Uganda here, farmers have had challenges in getting the right breeds and how to get the most out of them. As an organization, because again, like I said, we are owned by farmers, we are focusing through science and research and basing on the needs of the farmer. We have so many different breeds. For example, in Brazil, we have the Girolando. The Girolando breed is uh, a breed that was made out of uh, a combination of several years of research of crossbreeding of the hosting and the milking gene. This Girolando breed is tropicalized and will generate good amounts of milk while at the same time being tolerant to the heat stress and being able to feed in normal, normal pastures. We have several other breeds, as you can see here, we have the Jersey, we have the Hostin, we have uh, the Viking Red, we have the Ashers, and we, we ensure to bring all those different breeds to fill the gap that the farmer is missing. But we don't only bring the genetics, we make sure that we create the awareness. We are working with the Minister of Agriculture with the Marie, to make sure that before the farmers get the genetics they need, we make them aware what do they need to do to make sure they get the most out of the genetics. And they need not only the genetics, they need the genetics, they need good nutrition and good management. Thank you for watching. We hope you have learned a few lessons that will help you change the way you do things on your farm. Please subscribe, like, comment and follow us for more insight and lessons on farming as a business.